Hey guys, so we're just taking a walk through Greenbelt. We're meeting a friend. Yes, we're meeting a special friend here. We're about to get something to eat. Really cool area. Alright guys, so today we're with a very special guest. Uh, this is James. And from a while ago, if you remember um, during the uh, whole pandemic thing, we flew kites for a video one time. And probably over 100 kites. So it was like for every kite for the whole area for the kids. So um, many, many kids. And uh, that all came from James. Yes. Thank you. And a big shout out to Randy Johnson as well. He helped with all these connections too. Mm. But this is our first time meeting James and it was really cool. Uh, we just sat down for um, some dinner yes. and uh, we got to talk. I learned a lot about kites. Yeah. But um, what's kind of your backstory like with the kites? Well, um, okay. My name is James Kekinusa okay. and I've been flying kites for the last 25 years. Um, I started kites as a hobby. Uh, it was also a preparation for myself in my retirement period. I, I have to do something after work and after during my retirement so that I keep myself busy. Yes. Uh, I have flown kites almost everywhere in almost all the continents of the world wow. and I am happy that I still am flying kites even today. Um, I get to travel around, get to learn so many things, so many different cultures, so many different ways. And um, kites are not culture bound, they are universal. And um, I have a personal advocacy of uh, getting the children nowadays to fly kites because like in the Philippines, the tradition is uh, being lost because of the computer games and all sorts of kid, play, uh, kids they play at and they stay indoors. It should be fun to stay outdoors with the sun, your brothers and sisters, your mother and father, your aunt and uncles, and enjoy band, family bonding. Um, that's what my personal book is. That's awesome. Yeah, you definitely brought a lot of smiles. If you guys haven't seen that video uh, with the kites, that was such an amazing thing. After all those things, day. after all the hard work, after everything that we go through, the only thing we ask for is the children's smile. And everything is paid for. Our wages are already paid. That's awesome. Very nice. It's a pleasure to meet him personally. Yeah. And we get a chance to with them or yeah, we just had an amazing meal, and but we learned so much about flight kind. Like yeah. he does a lot of competitions all over the world, like he was saying. Like you probably visited more than 15 countries, doing way more than that, way more than that. And he does competitions all over the world, though he used to, but he still goes there. And um, it's interesting. Like what has been the biggest flight or biggest kite you've seen while flying? Um, our, the world kite community is like a family. Okay. Um, we see each other almost every three months in festivals around the world. It's a big family, it's a big community, and if you are the host country, um, you'd be very proud that all your friends around the world come and visit you. It's a big community of friends, of people who enjoy flying kites. Yeah. And it's really interesting though, we were talking to him, there's like different kind of competitions. There's one where it's like battle kites, where you fly uh, like normal sized kites, and you go up and you battle. You like try to cut the other person's string yeah. um, with it, the kites. Like it, they, they it, coat it, it with glass. It's called combat kites. And what you do is two kites off, and you use strings with glass. With glass. Literally glass. How do they make the glass stay onto the string? 
uh, they put some glue or something on it and then they they do it manually and then um, when they fly their kites um, with the glass lines when it gets to touch with each other they pull it like somebody has to lose yes. somebody has to cut yes so that's the story and when when the when 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 the loser loses his kites they just go off and the children run after them <laughs> they run and chase it that's fun so how many usually are in a competition like that sometimes 20 um, we do 50. it we do i mean professionally we do it around the world i mean there's a competition and it's called Manja International. We do it in France for the World Championship. But locally, we teach them, we teach children to do it. But um, we always have a priority on safety because this is dangerous. I mean, yeah. the glass line can cut anything. Wow. So we made sure that we, number one, it's safety. Number two, the players know what they're doing. And number three, always keep in mind that you know nobody gets hurt right yeah. otherwise we answer for everything yeah and then there's other kind of competitions there's ones where uh, like precision and yes. like um ballet they yes, call it like yes, ballet in the yes. sky well there are a few competitions um that we do um there are those that we compete on either ballet or precision type competition so you either have four strings or two strings and this these kites move very very fast wow. and if you're doing ballet you have a two minute routine to do your ballet show them what you have and if you do your precision you pick three um, precision moves and you go for it and there will be judges to um, know who wins and who, uh, who does not and like what are some of the things you might draw well um, probably you can you draw a circle okay you do you get a up down dive or you get a zigzag i mean those are a few things of 16 precision moves wow what's like more most difficult to do out of the uh, uh, well you need to do a lot of practice because you need to be competent and proficient on the 16 um, moves but the hardest part i think is the fly up and dive because when you dive it's only about what nearly half a meter from the ground wow. when you go up again so that's wow. so hard because you have to be precise as soon as the kite goes up it goes down on maximum speed and you have to break before the half meter ground is and you have to go up again that's, that's really a position and with those kind is it one string or does that uh, one it's have double more than, it's double okay dual lines dual lines and what size are those kites what, what, what what's the size of those kites uh, is it different well it's a whip I, I i normal stunt kite would be about uh one and a half meters in wingspan okay and then it's about 90 centimeters tall Wow, mm. and it has two lines, so you can maneuver those kites. You can flip, you can fly, you can dive, whatever you want. And are you able to do all those things? Yes. Yes. Well, that's... The more he tells about kite, flying kites and the, all those things, the more I get interested. Yeah, to really. See it personally, like. Like before our dinner tonight, I really didn't know anything about flying kites. I thought it's just normally. They yeah, just you fly just go kites. out there and you fly yeah. it. And he shows us pictures and videos and makes us interested. Yeah, one of the most expensive kites in the world is two hundred and fifty thousand U.S. dollars. Wow. And it, how big is that kite? It's about one thousand square meters. One thousand square meters. It uses um, nylon ripstop, which will cost you about four or five dollars a square meters. And that wow. one thousand square meters on one side, and there are two sides of it plus the side. So you, you're probably talking. 3,000 square meters That's of material. And it takes like, what do you think, a dozen people to get well, ready, prepare? Takes, uh, wow. You have to have a professional team flying, specifically those types of uh, guides. Yeah. Um, in the world, a team of six professional guys to fly it, okay. and a team of 20 people to hold um, the um, tailing lines uh, until it gets off the air. 
Um, that's how it is. And there are only a few people in the world who can do it. That knows how to do it? Wow. And those are pretty strong. Uh, so you have to tie it off uh, to like something. They're, they're tied on eight 40 foot containers wow. loaded with sand. And the eight of them. So it won't move. Yeah, so there's no way you can do it on your own. No. It would you, take you away. No. <laughs> you can make no. a partial out of it. Yeah, you could. Like these things are huge. Yeah. You might jump out of a plane with it and go <laughs> <Yeah>. down. <laughs> um, That's amazing. It's 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 good to come and see a kite festival if um, time permits because yes. there'll be a lot of things you can learn and see. Yeah. yeah. If anybody's interested in joining like a flight competition or a yeah. kite competition, how do you? We have we have um, clinics. Um, okay. We have kite workshops for children. We have um, actual flying demonstrations for those who are interested. Yeah. Come, come and call us, and we'll, we'll show you how it is. Like, do they search something on Google, or is it? What, what yes, we can do that on Google, and we like, can, we can. If you're near us, come and see, show you. Like, if they wanted to search it, what would they search? Um, kite Association of the Philippines. Flight Association of the kite, Philippines. Kite Association, kite association yeah, of the one Philippines. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll put that information in just in yes, case if anybody um, wants somebody to. Somebody will answer you on the web, Kite Association of the Philippines. Okay. And that's where you can ask uh, where we fly, how do we go about teaching, and all those things. Yeah. So are you happy with your retirement plan? Yes, I that's, am. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, the last, like, what, 25 years, he's been traveling to different countries, like, pretty much nonstop. I mean, he does. Well, he's been to so many different countries. I think that's so cool. Well, I mean, before I went to this, I knew I would be traveling even before. That's why it was a good preparation for retirement because it will keep me busy all year round. And it's fun because I meet my kite family, yeah. my kite community, and we go serve the children of the world. It's not only here in the Philippines. We've been around going everywhere for the children. That's awesome. And you guys haven't seen the video with uh, when we gave the kites to our community yeah. in San Mong. It was such a fun day. They, they shipped boxes and the kids assembled the kites themselves. They had like a white piece of paper where they drew their name on it or anything, what they wanted on the paper. Yeah. And then they put it together, they assembled it. It's including putting the string on, like everything, and then they flew the kites. Like it was such an amazing yeah. experience. It was really good. I'll be so. pretty happy to do it again. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I think the kids would love that too. So yeah. nowadays we cannot travel freely, so not a problem with me. Yeah. yeah. So what a cool day. I'm glad this is so fun meeting people in person that you know a lot of things have happened behind the scenes that it's cool to actually get a face to them and get yeah. to know them and that's really cool. So what a fun day to get to meet him. So hopefully you guys enjoyed meeting James today. Yes. And so uh, that's cool. So where's your next destination? Where's that? When's your next uh, destination for your flight for uh, kite flying? Like when's your next competition? Where my next it? competition would be from um, Thailand. Thailand. To Malaysia. To Malaysia. And then up to uh, Kabong and then in Brunei. Wow. Awesome. Then I'll be home. It's, so that's we'll so start cool. In on February 21, and we'll end on March 7. Wow. So he's There's a busy about guy. Four, four major festivals in Asia. Wow. Are you more busy now in your retirement than you were when you were working? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're pretty sounds busy. Like it. It sounds, yeah. sounds like I am not being retired. Yes. So when do you think you're going to retire? I don't from know. Kite I hope I can. Yeah. But, but he's I, I must be honest. Yeah. It's That's always amazing. fun to see friends, see family. Um, because they're my family yeah. around the world. It's just fun. We see each other every three months, but like when we see each other again, it's like we, we, like we no start all over gone. again. That's awesome. And we, we, we tell the same stories again and again and again. <laughs> Never stops in the same story. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> all right, so I guess that's about it. Yes. Any final thoughts? Um, for those people who want to fly kites, come and call us. We'll be glad to show you what kite is all about. That's awesome. Thank you, yeah. for Dustin and Richie. Thank you for dinner. Yeah. I'd love to see you again. Yes, yes. for sure. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Bye. See you guys later. Take care. Let's fly kite. <laughs>
Hey guys, today we're gonna put together some kites. And before we start, there's a couple shout outs because uh, a few people behind the scenes that really helped out a lot. Yeah. The first one to, is a big shout out to Newell Brands and Sanford LP for the Sharpies. Oh. See all these Sharpies here? Oh. Many, many Sharpies came in and that's a huge thanks to you guys. So thank you very much. And then the kites, and that's a big shout out to Kite Association of the Philippines, also known as KAP or CAP. K -A -P -A -P, K -A -P. Yeah, they supplied the, ca the kites. Um, a huge thank you to James, the KAP International Liaison, and they, uh, they helped greatly. So thank you very much. And all this could not have been done without Randy Bam Johnson. Oh, Randy Bam. Randy Bam Johnson. Yeah, look. Mr. Hi, Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Volunteers, Palisitators. Palisitators. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Dustin Mr. Burger. Mr. Chiricanti. And I don't know the last name. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Raimundo. But thank you very much, Randy Bam Johnson. That's You helped out a lot. So, we are going to get started. We're going to pass around. Here's all the kites. And then um, the strings and everything. So we're going to assemble these today. And uh, we're going to try to go to different areas and do this with different groups. So, But today we're going to start here. So uh, we're going to pass them out and then we're just going to get started. So some of the materials are, we have the sticks, which are like coconut branches. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to use that for the kites. And then we have some markers and then these are for the tails. So the first step is uh, everyone can get two of these. All right, next step is adding the tail. You guys can pick a color. Green. Nice. Looks good. Alright, the next is the string. Does everyone want to pick out a color? Blue. This is for me. Pink, Kasim. Oh, Diliko? Can you look green? Can you look green? So, what color is it? Bro, Taiwan here and Japan here. <laughs> Taiwan there and Japan there. Dustin, Richie, and Raymond eating mukbang challenge. Dustin eat fish. Richie eat holy chon. Raymond chicken only. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Always thinking of food. <laughs> the truth is, Raymond eats all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 red, red, red first, red. Are right, you guys ready? Yeah. Let's go.
If you listen, everyone's whistling because they're calling for the wind to come. Bye bye. All right, so we are right outside of Raymond's house. Raymond Richie's house is right down there, and uh, whenever we drive by, there's a bunch of kids here. So they're making some kites right now. All right, so we're at a new location. We're at Omen's house. Thank you, Sharpie. Oh. <laughs> Very quiet kids.
<laughs> One of the kids brought their own kite. Now the kids are putting on the tails. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I don't know if you guys remember, but a while ago we made a video. Raymond, myself, Richie, and Omen, we found a nice flat area up top. So that's where we're gonna go right now. You're welcome! You're very welcome. Oh, hey, bro! This is the best spot for flying some kites. Right down this way is Omen's house. Check out that view. And then over there is Baludoy's house. You can see Baludoy's house, the blue one. If you can see that. But check out the spot. There's not a whole lot of wind today, but some of the kites are taking flight. There's Bluto's son, Michael. If you guys seen the last video when we were here, Omen climbed this and got some coconuts for uh, me, Raymond, and Richie. And right now, that kite is stuck up there. Nice job, James. James got his kite down from the coconut tree. Look how high that is. Today's not a very windy day, but even without the wind, the kites are flying pretty well. Here's James' kite. James tied it to this tree and he's just out there flying on its own. Someone came with their own kite today. What's up, bro? Nice kite. Check out this kite. Wow. Hey, let's see it for a minute. Look at this. That's really cool. All right, let's see it take off.
You're welcome. All right, Rich and I are just driving around. We have a backpack full of markers and of his other sack. We're gonna just go around as many kids as possible. We're gonna give them away. See you guys later. You're welcome. <laughs> He's running away. <laughs> you guys want one more? We'll give him one more. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye bye. <laughs> The kids are running for Sharpies. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, man. Three, two, one. Thank you, boy.